There's no doubt that building is one of the most important Fortnite skills when it comes to winning fights. However, <laughs> hey, all that building is pretty much meaningless if you happen to whiff your shots. And at the end of the day, Fortnite is a shooter, and you're going to need to be able to land those shots to win games. So today, we're going to be going over the optimal settings and equipment for aiming in Fortnite. And we're also going to be speaking on the importance of warm-up routines, hey. And we'll provide a few different ways to help you work on your aim. Sorry, controller players, a lot of this video has to do specifically with keyboard and mouse. In fact, feel free to use this as a way to make the transition if you like. And if you're interested in a similar video for controllers, leave us a comment. After checking out this video, head over to ProGuys.com to try out InstaPro. Test out your new equipment and settings with a skilled coach to guide you. Hey guys, once again, this is Keith Allen, and you already know what time it is. It's time to look into the right settings and tips to improve your aim. Let's go. In order to aim like the pros, hey, you first need to make sure you have the right equipment. <laughs> and when it comes to aiming with the mouse, having a good one is very important. Main reason being the sensor. Lore and mice, even some branded for gaming, generally have cheaper sensors in them. They just can't keep up with tracking fast movements. Performing quick turns or flicks is next to impossible without making the pointer bug out. That's not to say all budget mice are bad. Some do contain sensors that work very well. Just make sure you pick the right one. High-end mouse manufacturers like Logitech, SteelSeries, Razer, Zoe, and Final Mouse all tend to use top-notch sensors that provide the truest movement possible. You usually can't go wrong with their products. As for which you choose, that usually comes down to preference on things like weight, size, and shape. The right mouse is pointless without a proper mouse pad to rest it on. Size is an important factor, and usually the bigger the better. You need to make sure the pad has enough room for you to move the mouse and your arm around without running out of space. Gaming mouse pads are usually large enough for this purpose. Then there's the material it's made out of. Cloth mouse pads provide more friction, while hard pads allow for slicker movement. The material, hey, it really comes down to preference, and in the end, either can work just fine. So, what about keyboards? Well, in our opinion, having a good keyboard isn't necessary. Using a high-end mechanical keyboard definitely feels better, but there doesn't seem to be any practical downsides to just using a cheap one. The great thing with Fortnite and modern gaming mice is that you can simply plug them in and use them properly without having to tweak any settings. However, I mean, it's generally a good idea to download and install any software that accompanies your peripherals. Having the mouse software installed will allow you to inspect and change numerous settings. The most important setting you want to check here is the DPI. DPI is your mouse's sensitivity value. The higher the value is, the faster your pointer will move. While many gaming mice allow for DPI to be set ridiculously high, it's usually better to run a lower value. The reasons behind it are technical, but just know that nearly all mice tend to work better at lower DPIs. Going too high can cause it to track movement inaccurately. 400 is on the low end of DPIs, and we say anything above 1200 is high. 800 is the most common and what we recommend using. Now onto the end game settings. So if you didn't know, your end game sensitivity works in conjunction with your DPI. For instance, if you double your DPI in your mouse settings, but don't touch any in-game settings, your crosshair movement will still become twice as sensitive. That's why it's important to always keep both figures in mind when talking about sensitivity. It allows players to make finer adjustments to their mouse movements, allowing their aim to be more precise. But in Fortnite, hey, we have this building thing. You know, with the ramps and stuff, and too low of a sensitivity can make a quick building become difficult and tedious. Because of that, the general sensitivity in Fortnite tends to be higher than in games without similar restrictions. To make our shooting sensitivity lower, we have the ADS and scope sensitivity options. When you aim down sights or look into a scope weapon, these values are applied. They're set to 1.0 by default, which can be fine. If you feel like you're missing a lot of rifle shots, messing up your SMG tracking, or you're having trouble lining up snipes, we recommend you trying to lower it. Anything from 0.4 to 0.7 should work fine. And again, make adjustments in either direction if it doesn't feel right. Ultimately, what sensitivity you choose is going to come down to preference and there are many factors involved. Hey, not everyone finds the same setup comfortable, so it's up to the end user to decide. Of course, you're not going to become an aim god just by having the right mouse in the proper settings. Aiming really well with a mouse can be something that can take months, okay, or even years to develop. 
You don't just magically get it when you buy the latest Final Mouse and copy Tfue's config. Sure, those things may help, but the continuous practice is what's going to truly sharpen your aim skills. Each day before you play, we recommend at least 10 minutes of aim training to sufficiently warm up. And if you really wanted to grind at it, you could spend hours each day training your aim. That'll definitely improve your aim a lot. But most people don't have that kind of time available. So just try to get a few minutes in at least. And Fortnite, the best modes to practice aim in are Creative and Team Rumble. Creative's great since there are custom levels designed purely for aim training. One example is Gersey's Combat Training, which we talked about in a previous video. We highly recommend adding that map to your favorites so you can just practice with it. The code's in the description. Team Rumble also provides good training in its own right. It's not really a super intense aim training session like the creative courses are. However, it does provide a more realistic setting for your practice, with it being player versus player combat. You can get pretty good aim practice versus gliding players, and it also helps you learn how to aim when building is thrown into the mix, something that can't be done as well with creative maps. So what about training outside the game? First off, hey guys, know that it's not necessary to train your aim using third-party aim trainers. That being said, they definitely have their uses. For instance, I mean, you can play them while waiting in queue for a match, you know, to make sure you stay warmed up. Also, if you're looking for training for more hardcore than what's available in Fortnite, this is where you turn. Aim Lab is one option. It isn't fully complete and it's still in early access stages on stream. On the plus side, it's free to play. So no real worries if you try it out and don't like it. It has a sufficient variety of training tasks that can help with all styles of aiming. And it's pretty customizable as well, with settings that can be changed to match the shooting of Fortnite. If you're not happy with Aim Lab, you can always give Kovacs Aim Trainer a try. Kovacs is similar to Aim Lab in terms of settings and customization, but it does, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> cost a bit of money to purchase. Still, if you're willing to drop some money for a more complete Aim Trainer, hey, check it out. We cannot stress enough the importance of training your aim. And if you're not doing it, don't be surprised if your accuracy never improves. While aim training definitely helps improve accuracy, here are several other tips and tricks you can use to land more shots. First, let's touch on where you should target on your opponent. Going for headshots doubles your damage in most cases, but sometimes you're just better off just aiming for the body. You know, a lot of rifle fights in this game happen at such long distances. And when you're that far apart, lining up your crosshair on the head can take time. And that time, I mean, you may have landed a couple of body shots already. Not only that, but since the head is a smaller target, you're more likely to miss. Do not go for headshots at ranges longer than, let's say, 30 or 40 meters, unless the players are standing still. One thing that you need to know is how each weapon is meant to be aimed. The heavy assault rifle is a great example. It's not really designed to be fired at full auto as the bloom becomes horrendous. In 90% of cases, you're better off utilizing the first shot accuracy with it to land more shots. Conversely, the regular ARs don't lose as much accuracy as the AK while full spraying and are much more viable being fired full auto. Always remember, for weapons that have bloom, bullets always tend to go toward the dot in your crosshair. Some weapons more often than others, but that's still always what you want to aim with. Don't think you just need to sort of put your crosshair over them and leave the rest to bloom. That's not how it works. Another example of a weapon that gets misused a lot is the sniper. Obviously, it shoots a projectile bullet that you usually need to lead. This can be difficult, but there are a few tips to make it so you land more shots. First, you want to assess your opponent's movement for a second. You want to be able to find an opening where the movement slips up and allows for an easier shot. They may stand still, which could be the best scenario to land that shot. Many players also tend to jump around, which you can take advantage of. Once a player jumps, it's also very easy to know where they'll be landing. Now, if you aim and time your snipe just right, you can usually get an easy hit in. It takes some practice to perform consistently, of course, but it's definitely one of the easier shooting methods when it comes to snipers. A general tip that applies to nearly every shooter game out there is crosshair placement. Having your crosshair already placed as close as possible to your potential target is going to reduce the time needed to aim onto them. For instance, if you're chasing an enemy and you know they're right around the corner, you wouldn't want your shotgun crosshair pointed toward the ground. That would be near their feet, which isn't an optimal shot. Instead, you want to move it up to headshot level. That way, when you turn the corner, you may not even need to move your crosshair to land a headshot. Proper crosshair placement can often be the deciding factor on whether you win or lose a fight. Let's talk about factoring movement into your aim. Of course, when you're in a close range fight, you want to have unpredictable movement to be as hard to hit as possible. A lot of players just think this means jumping. 
But, but a lot of the time, jumping is a bad idea in a fight. Once your opponent sees you jump, it's really, really easy to line up a shot. Jumping can be good, but it has to be done right. You need to successfully be able to predict when your opponent will shoot so you can jump right before it and avoid the shot. If you are committing to a close range battle, a better tactic is to sort of straight toward and around the right side of your opponent. This takes advantage of the third person perspective. Hey, it's done so that you're essentially using their character model as cover. Straping to the right also makes it easier for you to land your shots, as you have more vision and room to aim on the right side of the screen. You can crouch spam while doing this to throw off anyone going for a headshot as well. So what about aiming down sights? When should you do that? Well, when using a rifle at range, you pretty much always want to use it. At closer ranges with pretty much all weapons, it's often better to forget about ADS so you want to have better movement. Some weapons like the drum gun, for instance, don't really benefit at all much from ADSing at close range. At that point, you're training far too much movement for just a bit of accuracy. With the shotgun, hey, you could throw in a quick ADS before you shoot just to increase accuracy a bit. You won't limit your movement too much as long as you don't stay zoomed in, but you'll boost your damage by a decent amount with each shot. With the right equipment and settings, man, you can make sure you're setting yourself up for success. However, remember that success doesn't come for free. The most important factor is improving your aim is the time you put into training. Keep that in mind, guys, while you practice. And before you know it, you'll be landing more shots, eliminating more players, and winning more games. Hey, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, this is Keith Allen, and I want you to connect with me on my Instagram. Hey, follow me because we have some things coming out in the future. Take care.